Hey guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So as you see by the title, today we are talking about brands it seems the beauty community has forgotten about. And I'm talking the ones like think back to 2012, 13, 14, maybe even 15, like that's all you heard people talking about. And now it'd probably be easier finding Waldo than finding some people talking about some of these brands. So we're gonna take a look at why we've seemed to forgot about some of these brands and take a look at where they are now. So if you guys wanna see more of that, then this. So I was on Twitter and I asked the question, what are some brands you feel the beauty community have forgotten about? You guys gave me a lot of replies, but I just went with the five that I saw the most. This is 10, but I went with the five brands that I saw the most in the replies. The first one being Girard Cosmetics, better known as Gerard Cosmetics and I, I feel like I can say this with my chest out okay Gerard Cosmetics was then what Morphe is now okay well okay maybe Morphe like two years ago when Morphe was at its peak that's what Gerard Cosmetics was like five years ago think that very heavily pushed influencer brand you know how Morphe has the influencer collabs and the influencer codes and stuff like that well Gerard has some of your fave Morphe affiliates before Morphe had them okay the Jaclyn Hills the Carly Bybells I'm pretty sure Gerard was before James yeah it was, it was before James Charles but I'm sure if James Charles was um you know, a big beauty influencer at the time of Gerard. Gerard would have had him as well. Like it was a very heavily pushed influencer brand. If you guys remember, um, the products that they were kind of most known for are their lip products, their lipsticks, their liquid lipsticks, and their setting sprays. They were that brand that was popular for having the little uh, light up reflective products. Like they had the mirror on the lip product and then it had like a wand or something that lit up so you could see when you're applying your lipstick at night or stuff like that they also had teeth whitening products but mainly they were known for their lip products and their setting spray now things kind of started going downhill after the owner of gerard cosmetics was caught on camera basically calling a customer ugly because she didn't like one of the products that she purchased Different stories came out on what was meant by calling her ugly, and you can interpret it how you want to interpret it on what she meant by calling her ugly, whether it's, you know, oh, she has an ugly personality, you know, the way she reviewed the product is ugly, but most people took it as you're saying she is physically ugly because she didn't like your product, right? And this was before drama was what it is now in the beauty community. You know, like now we get a drama get in every single year <laughs> around the same time too. You know, now you hear about drama with an influencer or with a brand and you're just kind of like okay same stuff different day but back then like that, that stuff didn't happen you didn't hear you didn't have these like breaking news drama stories in the beauty community so when it happened everyone was just kind of like what what like, no, just, mm -mm, i can't do this like influencers started cutting ties left and right and then it just kind of fizzled out like you didn't really hear people promoting the brand anymore and honestly i feel like even without that drama they would still be where they are right now. You know, like fast forwarding, they would still be in the position where they are right now, where people are saying it's a brand people forgot about. Because think about it, like I said, their their most notable products were their liquid lipsticks and, and their setting sprays. In 2020, is anyone getting hype over, you know, a liquid lipstick launch or a setting spray? launch type of thing so i am curious to see what are they doing now okay so let's fire up the site we're gonna go to the what's new section for every brand okay um they've got a sweatshirt i guess they, they sell merch now um the first thing i'm seeing is 1995 the liquid lipstick and i'm telling like i specifically remember this lipstick because it's you know a year and this stayed sold out okay this is one of the shades that everyone was talking about back in the day everyone wanted back in the day so to see that be one of the first things that pops up on the what's new page okay um then they've got the bullet lipstick another hydromat liquid i don't remember do i remember that name i, I feel like i remember that name Okay, um, there's a collab, but it's on the setting sprays. Okay, they've got a clean canvas eye concealer and base, and it looks like they've got ones that are um, like skin tone base. That is new for the brand, and I feel like that kind of makes sense coming out with that now because um, ever since like P. Louise took off, um, people were looking for, you know, like skin tone bases. Okay, and it, it looks like they have good reviews. Okay, all right, I see the setting spray another hydra mat an eyeshadow what is that a honeymoon starlit palette probably like a blush highlighter duo thing another hydra mat 
a lip pencil, a hydromat, setting spray, and more merch. Okay, and then they've got some makeup removing balm. So it looks like about 80% of what's on the What's New page are stuff that we've seen before, the setting sprays and some type of lip product. I'd say 10% can go to the merch. You know, they've got like Gerard themed merch, shirts, stuff like that. And then the other 10% I would give to the makeup removing box. I don't remember ever seeing that before. And then the uh, pigmented eye bases. The eye bases are the only thing on this What's New page that are the least bit interesting. But given where we are right now, especially since you know, like people aren't buying makeup like that, I feel like people certainly aren't buying eyeshadow palettes like that. It's like, are they buying eye bases? like that like I feel like a lot of people we're talking like the normal everyday makeup wear it's like are they really stressed over an eye base but if I you know was like I have to try something new from Gerard the eye bases are the only thing on this page that would get me to stop scrolling. So the next brand is Lorac and y'all remember those palettes? I can't remember what they're called now. Sorry to this man. But y'all know which ones I'm talking about, okay? Cause they were up there with like the palettes you needed to have if you wanted to sit with the cool kids. Like I'm talking up there, up there with the chocolate and the naked palettes. And I wanted one of these so bad back in the day. And this was during a time like where they were either being discontinued or they had just been discontinued. So they were going through the process of like phasing them out from stores that they were sold in like Ulta, stuff like that. And I was like, no, nah, I gotta get one of these. Like I have to, I just gotta bite the bullet and get one, right? Because y'all know like those things weren't cheap either right so i finally got my hands on one and it came in the mail and i opened it and i was just like oh 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 okay this is underwhelming this is so underwhelming it's to a point where this is like kind of disappointing like this is what all the hype was about so i got that first palette and that was my reaction to it, and i was just kind of like you know what I think I'm good on this brand because like that's really the the thing you heard people talk about the most when it came to Lorac and then after that it just felt like some type of variation of these what were they called pro palettes Lorac pro was that what they were called I feel like some type of variation of these palettes were launched every holiday season and then after that like you just didn't hear about them anymore because the eyeshadow palette was really like all you heard people talk about. And if you watch people's like uh, declutter videos, those palettes usually get decluttered in videos nowadays. People even still have them nowadays, like they get decluttered or they're just not used. So let's see what they are up to today. So I'm on the What's New page. The first thing I see is their Pro, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was called like Pro Palettes. Palette Artist Edition, Pro Palette Soleil. Pro Palette Noir, Mini Pro Palette, <laughs> Mini Pro Palette, Pro Liquid Eyeliner, okay. Uh, uh, single Pan Eyeshadow Palette, Eyeshadow. Uh, Lux Diamond Golden Hour Highlighter Palette. What is this? Diamond Eye Gloss, so probably Liquid Eyeshadow. Lip Gloss, and then a Foundation. Um, these aren't, like, unlike, unlike, um, Gerard who has like the the exact shades that you remember back in the day these aren't the actual pro palettes that people were talking about back then I, at least I don't believe they are if they are then they've changed like the the design of the palettes these aren't exactly those but they're still putting out those type of you know like pro palette type things and honestly like look at look at these four palettes don't these look like the same shades, just reorganized <laughs> in different orders? Okay, um, those those liquid eyeshadows, they look like they would be pigmented, especially this one, this green, purple, reddish one. They look like they'd be pigmented on the eye. Okay, okay. Um, the lip gloss, I don't remember anyone talking about lip products from them back in the day, so that might be a little bit newer. And then they've got the foundation, which I do remember the announcement of the foundation coming out, um, a couple months ago, but I, I remember it because like they showed the shade range and it wasn't, it wasn't that good. I don't know if my Wi-Fi is going to load. If it doesn't, I'll just pop up the shade range of the foundation. But that's why I remember people talking about it because they were like, what is this? What is the shade range? This is what we're launching in 2020. Okay. Okay. So they have physically put out new things, but it seems like they're sticking with their branding of, you know, 
basic and basic isn't always a negative but just basic you know black sleek packaging and then for the inside uh that neutral color story that they always had for their eyeshadow palettes and that neutral color story for their eyeshadow palettes that were not the most flattering for you know like my skin tone or deeper so moving right along so the next brand is stila cosmetics and i'm sitting here trying to think like was stila ever really one of the girls and i feel like the answer is no because like they never talked about it like a two-faced or a mac but they did talk about it and funny thing is when they did like people usually only had good things to say about the brand like nothing negative is sticking out to me about them i feel like their most memorable things were those um those liquid eyeshadows again the type of things that when when the beauty community talked about it like you wanted to run out and go buy it like that's what sticks out to me the most were their um liquid eyeshadows and then it was just kind of like actually i lied the last time i heard about stila they were being called out <laughs> for photoshopping their swatches darker than the product actually was which yikes but let's see where they are now okay so we are on their what's new page and the first thing i see is a kaleidoscope eyeshadow just a single pan um kaleidoscope eyeshadow duo okay plumping lip glaze is this a lip eye cheek stick lip and eye paint eyeliner i feel like i remember them i yeah i feel like they were known back in the day for their eyeliner. Ooh, okay, what's this? One Step Correct Kitten Skin Tone Correcting and Brightening Primer. Okay. Brightening Serum, Shadow Set, Lash Mascara, Travel Size One Step. Okay. Um Okay, now I do know Stila has been still putting things out in recent years, even though people haven't talked about them as much. So it's not like they're one of the brands who are relying on, you know, like the same five products five years later. But I'm looking at the things that they have put out, like what's on this What's New page. And I'm like, does any of this make you want to stop scrolling to look a little bit more at the product? I I feel like I remember the, the liner being one of their more popular products. So I'm kind of not surprised to see it on here. Um, but honestly, I don't really want to stop scrolling until I get to the end where I see the corrector and brightening primer. Like that has piqued my interest. I do know not too long ago they came out with a foundation, which I meant to do a foundation hunt video on. Let me know if you guys want to see a video on that foundation. But other than that, like I'm looking at the other things like this is giving me real, you know, these are the type of stuff like you just throw on when you need like a quick little color on your lips or a quick little something on the eye and go type of thing. Like nothing is, is really sticking out to me here about this brand. Do you let me know if anything is sticking out to you? I honestly feel like if I was going to check in to steal it, it would probably be their complexion products because I feel like they were talked about for their complexion products back in the day and they were supposed to be good and I never really, you know, tried them. So that's probably what I would try from this brand, probably starting with that primer that I keep scrolling past. But, um, okay. I feel like this is so far out of the brands I've talked about. Um, the brand that got me to be somewhat <laughs> interested the most from scrolling their What's New page we'll see if we see that primer in a future video so the next brand is revlon and honestly i can see why people would say that because like before we had all these options with foundation back in the day if you watch those yearly favorite videos best believe like 70 percent of them were going to include that revlon color stay foundation funny thing is i did a video using products that the community hyped up like five years ago that they don't talk about anymore so i repurchased color stay and you know they they made some points on hyping it up like it, it was a good foundation that people just kind of like stopped talking about and of course they're still around of course they're still launching things because they're they're a legacy brand and i'm pretty sure like the older crowd watching will be like what what do you mean people forgot about revlon it's revlon they're always going to be here right and it's like yes of course we know that but when you think about it you can't act like there hasn't been a shift in affordable makeup because i feel like affordable social media based brands have kind of taken the spotlight from drugstore brands because they they're both the same price range right but you hear more about you know like a brand like ColourPop as opposed to revlon maybelline or covergirl and when you think about the reasons why it kind of makes sense why you hear more about those than you do drugstore nowadays because they're so they're social media based like they're a whole um 
thing is being a brand that is pushed heavily on social media either just by how the brand carries their own social media pages or because they use influencers on social media whereas drugstore brands they kind of still have a, a good balance between regular marketing you know billboards magazines commercials and social media use and influence and stuff like that where social media brands like that's that's what it is you know like we're putting all of our money into making sure you see us everywhere on social media so it kind of makes sense and I, i've noticed that in recent years how like you see when you hear like affordable type things and stuff like that like you're seeing more of these indie brands like ColourPop and stuff like that and you're hearing a little bit less about the rimmels and covergirl i'm trying to think of like drugstore brands they're not even coming to mind. <laughs> They're not even coming to mind besides like Maybelline and Revlon. So that, I'm pretty sure that's what people mean when they say, you know, like I feel like people forgot about Revlon, but I feel like I know some of the things that they've been up to lately. Like one that really gave them that push back into people talking about them, but let's see what's on their what's new page. I think what's new just loads on the actual landing page when you open it, either that or they don't have like a specific page for the mobile, but I'm just gonna scroll down. They do have this little new arrival section right here that has the new wonder, oh, come on, that has the new Wonder Woman collection. I did use some of that in the trying new to me video that I uploaded not too long ago. Scrolling down, they've got eyeliner trending they've got a revlon and sophia collection collab sophia carson okay these are nail polishes matte lip scroll down oh this, okay this is sophia carson best sellers lipstick lipstick there's color stay um featured categories okay Okay. It's a little weird to me that the Wonder Woman collection is what's pushed to you under new arrivals. Like I do know some of the things that they've been coming out with recently and yes, that is a recent launch, but to see like no mention of their collaboration with Megan Thee Stallion, and I had to sit here and think about it. Like it is Revlon that she's the ambassador of now, right? It's not Rimmel. And I shouldn't have to think, I shouldn't have to question that. You know, if I just collabed with one of the, the biggest celebrities talked about this year, I, I'd be using that to my advantage left and right. Okay, you're not gonna forget that that's our new ambassador. Or she'd be all over the place, especially since in recent years, drugstore and um, counter brands have been having this conversation behind the scenes of how they want to bridge that gap between their brand and like the younger crowd, like Gen Z, stuff like that. Like I've legit had brands say, we're considered a mom brand and we want to branch out to that younger crowd to get them to look at us past being your mom's brand. And by mom's brand, you know, like, oh, my mom uses Revlon, you know, like my mom uses Clinique, my mom uses CoverGirl, that type of thing. And now before anyone gets their panties in a bunch, okay, there is nothing wrong <laughs> with being a mom brand. There is nothing wrong with that being the brand that your mom uses but let's be honest, they're all in the business to make money here. So if they branch into that younger crowd, into that uh, older crowd, into that middle crowd, that's more money for them and that's what they wanna do. So that's what they mean when they say, you know, they, they wanna, they don't wanna be looked at as just the type of brand that, you know, an older crowd would want or the type of brand that, and that, that goes both ways. There are brands who are like, our, our fan base looks very, very kiddish, you know, very Claire's Too Faced. So how do we how do we make sure the older crowd knows that we've got stuff for them too? Now, granted, every brand is going to have their target audience, but at the end of the day, they still want to appeal to as many people as they can, right? So I feel like being a brand that collaborated with someone who is the talk of the town right now, like that's what you could use to be appealing to that younger crowd. So to not see it on there is a little weird to me. But I feel like if you look at a drugstore brand's like what's new page and you see what's new, you're just kind of like, oh, okay, that's what's new. If you see something that sticks out to you, it sticks out to you. But like, they don't have themes that much to where you're like, this does or doesn't fit the aesthetic. Cause it's like drugstore brands kind of do everything, right? So it's like, they've got a Wonder Woman collection and you know, Two months from now, they could come out with a Christmas collection. They could come out with a lawnmower collection. And you, like, none of this is going to throw you off because it's a drugstore brand. They just kind of do a little bit of everything, right? So I feel like, again, it's a brand that won't ever really go anywhere. Like, it'll always be around. It'll always have, you know, its go-tos and its go-to customers. 
but like i said i feel like the whole like um affordable social media brands have kind of taken over their spotlight as far as being a brand that's heavily talked about now the last brand i have is a smashbox and this one kind of hurts but it's true. The beauty community kind of dipped on Smashbox, but the question is, did Smashbox give us a reason to dip? Now, Smashbox gets credited as one of the brands that kind of put primer on the map. Y'all remember they were coming out with like every variation of that iconic primer. Then there was the primer water, then there was the primer setting spray. They also had some other like popular foundations, a couple popular things like concealer and stuff here and there, but it was mostly just the primer. And then all of a sudden it was like, poof, nothing like we've gone over this before there are some brands that can get away with giving us the same thing over and over and over again and then there are some brands that can't but the question is what are they doing now i open this page and it's some new variation of this primer okay so we've got here the holiday 2020 collection which i see the primer um and i see a couple other little things in there it looks like just some minis in holiday packaging the photo finish prime and set duo with the setting spray and the primer, the photo finish mini primers, and then the Halo Healthy Glow Tinted Moisturizer. That I did not know about, and now I'm intrigued. Y'all know 12 Days Foundation Hunt is coming, so let me know if you want me to include that in it. But other than that, it's just a bunch of variations of the primer. Now, to be fair, it is, we are going into the holiday season where a lot of brands just throw in little mini versions of their famous products into holiday packaging and call it a day. Um, like you couldn't get something else, like nothing else. Like I'm sitting here trying to figure out like, where do we go from here, Smashbox? Mm -hmm. Where do we go? Like what, what, are we, what are we doing? Give us, give us something else anything else i would have known about that tinted moisturizer if i didn't log on to their website and let's be honest who wakes up and says you know what today i'm gonna log on to smashbox actual website like there are some brands who only focus on promoting the same products that made them popular when they very well could have created other products that could be just as great but they don't promo it well or at all so it's just it just sits there and they only get known for the brand with the primer and the setting spray and it's like, like what are we what are we doing but like I said, let me know if you guys want me to check out that foundation. So that is it for this video. That is where some of those brands that it seems like we've forgotten about are at now. Looking at where some of them are at now, I can see why some of them were forgotten about. Honestly, the only ones who had things on their like what's new page that stood out were Stila, a little bit of Smashbox, maybe a little bit of Revlon. Yeah maybe a little bit like a little bit um but yeah that is it for this video there was a long list on twitter so let me know if you guys want like a part two to this video talking about some other brands it seems people have forgotten about looking at where they're at now why they got to where they're at now <laughs> let me know all of that in the comments down below make sure to thumbs up comment subscribe turn notification bells down below thank you all for watching i'll see you in the next one bye